Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Interesting uh, phenomena, phenomena, uh, phenomena related with uh, Markov chain, and that is uh, you know time reversible Markov chains. So uh, let us just first uh, start looking at what we mean by all this. So suppose you are given this transition matrix P i j, okay, and you are given the uh, stationary state probabilities. So this is let's assume that the pi i's are all uh, positive, uh, because if there's a, if a pi i is zero, then surely we can drop that state from the process because it's not of any interest. So, um, so this is an ergodic process and so pi i j, pi i's are all there um, stationary probabilities and the system has gone on for some time. So, um, we are looking at the stationary uh, part of the thing. So, now consider the sequence uh, in the reverse order. So, this is x n, x n minus 1, x n minus 2 and so on. So, at this point of time uh, you are uh, looking backwards at the process. right? Now, we will show that this is also a Markov process. So, this is the interesting part that is uh, when you uh, a Markov process is going on and you at some point you want to look backwards and then you see the transitions and so on. So, there also the uh, uh, the sequence will fall follow the Markov will, will have the Markov property and so it will also be a Markov chain or a Markov process. So, um, now how do we show this? To show this I have to show that um, you know if Suppose the current time is m plus 1, then uh, you are occupying state i or the system is occupying state i, and then we want to look at the probability that uh, uh, in the pre p in the uh, time period just before uh, the that means uh, today and yesterday. So, it was uh, x m is equal to j. So, you want to look at the probability conditional probability. So, therefore, uh, uh, for if you are looking at like your today and you are looking at uh, yesterday's uh, situation, then all these days ahead that means, x m plus 2, x m plus 3 and so on all these. So, the conditional probability of you know having the uh, uh, history uh, future history and then x m plus 1 is i and you are wanting to know the probability of x m equal to j. So, this would be when you are at, at time m plus 1 and you are looking backwards. So, if you are looking at the, this thing then uh, this is all past for when you are looking backwards. right? So, therefore, this conditional probability uh, should be equal to x m equal to j given x m plus 1 equal to i. That means, it would just depend on the uh, current situation or the current state being occupied by the process and then uh, so th uh, this probability should be uh, you know here uh, all the states occupied in the past because now we are looking backwards. So, all the states occupied in the past do not matter it is only the current state that is occupied by the system and then uh, so you uh, this is what you want to prove. If I show this then it would imply that the uh, backward process uh, at any time uh, the backward process will also be uh, a Markov process. right? So, um, uh, present time is m plus 1 and we know that we are given that x naught x 1 x 2 this is a Markov chain as I said and the corresponding transition probabilities are p i j's and the pi i's are the station, stationary probabilities. Now, um, the conditional distribution of x m plus 2, x m plus 3 and so on given the present state that is given the present state x m plus 1, then we the, the Markov property tells us that uh, the uh, conditional probabilities of x m plus 2, x m plus 3 and so on do not depend on x m. right? because the conditional uh, probability of be, uh, whatever state is being occupied at time m plus 2 is dependent on this. right? And then of course, uh, x m plus 2 will be x m plus 3 will be dependent on x plus x m plus 2 and so on. So, uh, because this is a Markov process, we know that the uh, present state x m plus 1 is independent of uh, no, no. So, this is conditional distribution of x m plus 2, x m plus 3 and so on given the present state x m plus 1 is independent of x m the past right? and all things beforehand x m minus 1, x m minus 2. 
right. So, the conditional distribution of x m plus 2 or x m plus 3 and so on. So, conditional distribution of x m plus 2 would depend on the present state which is x m plus 1 and will be independent of x m. Similarly, conditional distribution of x m plus 3 will depend on the uh, state being occupied at time m plus 2 and so it will be independent of m plus 1 and x m and so on. Right. Now, we know that independence is a symmetric relation. You say that x i and x j are independent that means, x j and x i are also independent. So, it is a symmetric relationship. right? So, therefore, um, um, given that x m plus 1 x m given. So, that means, you're, when you are given x m plus 1 x m is independent of x m plus 2 x m plus 3 and so on. So, then I can say the reverse also. right? See, we just now said that given x m plus 1 x m is independent of x m plus 2 x m plus 3 and so on. This is what we want to say, because x m plus 2 is independent of x m x m plus 3 is independent of x m. So, therefore, the reverse because this is a symmetric relationship. So, I can say that x m given x m plus 1 x m is independent of x m plus 2 x m plus 3 and so on and therefore, this probability can be written as probability x m equal to j and x m plus 1 equal to i. Okay. And so, uh, we immediately conclude that uh, the backward process is also a Markov process and now, we want to look at uh, another uh, uh, special case of this. So, therefore, um, uh, forward or backward a Markov process has this property. right? Okay. Now, let us define these backward or the reverse probabilities. Right? So, uh, I will say that let q i j be equal to probability of x m is equal to j given that x m plus 1 is equal to i. right? So, I am defining the uh, backward or the reverse probability, pr reverse transition probability. So, this is uh, present currently you are in i and so, we are occupying uh, uh, state uh, position j uh, just uh, one period uh, before and so, uh, this conditional probability I can write as by the conditional probability formula, I can write this as x m equal to j uh, comma x m plus 1 equal to i divided by the probability of x m plus 1 equal to i. right? And then again this uh, product probability I can write a conditional uh, as a conditional probability x m plus 1 equal to i given x m equal to j into probability x m equal to j divided by probability x m plus 1 equal to i. Okay. And this, because we already have the transition probabilities for our uh, forward process uh, and this and the, and the stationary probabilities pi i. So, this can be written as uh, p j i, because j i, right. So, p j i into pi j probability x m equal to j and divided by probability i, that is being in state i at time m plus 1, it is a stationary probability. So, that means, given um, given the uh, transition probabilities and the uh, stationary probabilities, I can always compute the um, q i j s, which are the reverse transition probabilities. So, we can compute the q i j s. Right? Okay. And so, therefore, now um, um, I can say that this is a the backward process is also a Markov process and uh, the conditional uh, the transition probabilities the reverse transition probabilities are also available given the uh, regular uh, Markov process and the backward process. I can uh, and once you specify the transition matrix the reverse transition mat uh, probabilities the process is completely determined. Right? Okay. Now, the special case and the special case is in case q i j is p i j. Okay. In, in case the reverse probabilities are the same as the forward probabilities, transition probabilities. So, so if q i j is p i j, then you see uh, this equation q i j equal to p j i into pi j upon pi i, this reduces to, see you write here uh, p i j. So, it will be p i j. So, p i j into pi i, uh, p i j into pi i is equal to pi j into p j i. Right. Now, if you look at the left hand side, this says so, you this is the probability of being state i and then this is the probability of transitioning from i to j. So, this is the rate at which the process transitions from i to j. Right. 
and in our case this is uh, you know uh, because I am assuming that currently I am in i uh, state i and uh, uh, transitioning backwards to state j. So, this is your uh, probability the rate at which you are transitioning from i to j in the backward way and this pi j p j i. So, this is a probability of being in state j and then you are transitioning from j to i. Right. So, therefore, this is uh, your x m equal to j and then you are transitioning to i. So, forward probability. So, this is the rate at which the process transitions from j to i. So, therefore, now you say that this Markov chain is said to be time reversible Markov chain with respect to time, because the forward transition rate and the backward transition rate are exactly the same. And so, now you can see that um, uh, you know it is something like saying that if you um, uh, if you play a um, you know tape, then uh, you will not be able to differentiate whether it is playing backwards or forwards. This is the idea, right? If, if the uh, if the tape is the you know uh, is has captured the uh, process of a um, Markov chain, which is which has the time reversible property, then uh, whether you play the tape forward or backwards, it will exactly look like this. Uh, it will look exactly the same you will not be able to make a difference, because the rate of transitioning backwards and forwards is the same. Right? And this is the necessary condition for time reversibility. So, once uh, you have that means, if you have a set of transition probabilities and a set of uh, uh, and, and a, pro, a set of uh, probabilities, state probabilities, uh, which we will we say will show our uh, stationary probabilities, then uh, uh, and they satisfy this equation for all i j, then you see uh, uh, the system the Markov process has the property of time reversibility. So, this is, this is what we are trying to say. right? So, um, and again just may be it is a matter of again repeating that you are saying that you are uh, see here uh, this is i or this we are saying is j and this is i. So, then uh, you are going backwards or you are coming this way. right? when you are here you are looking backwards. So, then the transition the rate at which you transition is exactly the same uh, as you if you were here and then you transition to i. Right? So, this is what essentially uh, pictorially also this is what this equation says. So, this is a necessary condition and therefore, now we will show that the converse of this is also true and uh, uh, then you know look at some examples uh, of time or, or how exactly and of course, uh, the uh, other advantage that we will show uh, that uh, uh, reversible Markov chain time reversible Markov chains possess. Okay. So, now suppose p i j s are given and s is a vector of probabilities such that this condition is satisfied, which is your necessary condition for. Uh, so, we are looking at the converse what we are saying is that um, suppose you have a transition matrix and uh, you have a vector of probabilities such that this condition uh, the time reversibility condition is satisfied. That means, the process that we are given the Markov process is the uh, time reversible Markov process. Then, uh, so, so the process is reversible Markov chain, then s is the vector of stationary probabilities. So, therefore, what we are saying is that in case you have a probability vector, which satisfies uh, the uh, uh, reversibility equations. Uh, with corresponding to the p i j s, which are your transition probabilities, then the s i s can be nothing else, but the stationary probabilities, stationary state probabilities. So, uh, this is a convenient way of, because so now we know that, of course, uh, we said that the condition, uh, that means we, we, we said that if uh, s i s were stationary probabilities, and these were the transition probabilities, and these conditions were satisfied, then we defined a reversible Markov process. So, now we are saying, uh, talking about the converse, that if any probability vector along with this given transition probabilities for a Markov process satisfy these uh, uh, time reversibility equations, then s the s uh, s has to be nothing but uh, the uh, state probability vector. Okay, this is what you want to say. So, the, so suppose um, I start from here and then I sum up uh, these equations with respect to i. So, this is sigma uh, on uh, sigma with respect to i s i p i j is equal to summation uh, summation with respect to i s j p j i. Now, since s j is independent of i, so I take s j outside and this will be summation p j i over i. Right? 
but then uh, these being transition probabilities, you are summing up the probabilities of, j, uh, of rho j, right, p j i's with respect to i. So, you are summing up the elements of a row and that must add up to 1, because these are uh, elements of a uh, transition matrix and therefore, this is equal to s j, right. And so, uh, when you write down for all j, this is satisfied. So, this gives you the matrix equation that s s is equal to s p and therefore, s is the, uh, because remember we said that uh, when you do this and uh, you have the condition that uh, components of s add up to 1, then you have a unique solution and that unique solution is the uh, vector of state stationary probabilities. Okay. So, therefore, uh, we now uh, know that uh, any system, if we can find a vector s and we have the transition uh, probabilities for a Markov process satisfying this, then s must be the, uh, uh, s must represent the stationary probability vector. So, knowing this, now the, of course, the question is, um, we will so certainly want to look at some examples of reversible Markov chains and then we will show you that uh, uh, through these examples that, you know, computing uh, the state probabilities becomes very easy. And so, you do not have to uh, work out, you know, uh, apply matrix methods, iterative methods to solve uh, for s, because given this, you want to know the state probabilities. Then you have to uh, remember, we solved a system of linear equations, but when uh, the process, when the, when the number of states is very large, then uh, it will be very tedious to have to solve these equations. So, now through examples, we want to show you that uh, computing these state probabilities is very simple. Okay. And of course, uh, in the process, we also look at uh, uh, these examples. So the idea is that uh, now here, uh, let's look at uh, look at an undirected graph uh, with uh, four five nodes, right? And the links connecting them, the arcs connecting them. Now, what I'm doing is that uh, I'm writing uh, probabilities. That means transitioning from one to two to or one to three. These are the two edges. So I'm giving them equal probabilities. Right? And that is why it is called random walk, because you can wander around this graph. And what we are saying is that if, um, for example, 2, 2 has 4 edges incident on it, then it can, uh, you can traverse any of the edges with equal likely uh, probability. I mean, uh, traversing any uh, or picking up an edge to go along uh, is equally likely. And therefore, I am giving probabilities like p 2 1, p 2 3, p 2 4 and p 2 5 equal to 1 by 4. So, that means, when you are at node 2, uh, traversing the edge 2 1, 2 3 or 2 4 or 2 5 is equally likely. So, for the, for these are the probabilities, right. And then similarly, p 3 1 is equal to p 3 2 is equal to half and uh, p 4 2 is 1 and p 5 2 is 1. Okay. So, here from here you have no choice, you have to uh, go to uh, 2 only and from 5 also you can go to 2. Now, let me define d i as the degree of node i. Right. So, that means, uh, for example, for this the uh, degree is 2, for this the degree is 4, for this is 2, this is 1 and this is 1. Okay. And then, by the definition, uh, because of this definition, you see that immediately, since p i j is simply at, suppose you are at node 1, then your p i j is 1 by 2, because the two nodes are incident. So, this is equal to 1 by d i, since we are saying they are equally likely. So, d i into 1 by d i. Similarly, d j into, so uh, for example, if you are looking at uh, 1, 2, then uh, here suppose i is 1 and j is 2, then this is um, half and uh, d 1 is 2. So, this becomes 1 and then when you are here, d j is uh, the degree is 4, 4 into p j i uh, 2, 1 is uh, 1 by 4 and therefore, the product is 1 here again. So, this holds for all i j. Right. And so, now looking at this uh, uh, necessary condition is being satisfied. So, that means, this random walk where you know you can go from uh, at any node, you can traverse any edge, edge and go on wandering around this graph. That will be, uh, uh, so I mean uh, what we are saying is that this is a Markov process <coughs> and it is uh, time reversible, because it does not matter <coughs> the process has gone on. So, wherever you are, then again you start traversing and uh, or you look back to your this thing to your um, traversals before this. So, it will be the same process, there is no change, right, because um, the, 
I mean we interpreted this that the rate of going forward and the rate of going backwards is exactly the same, right. So, uh, once and of course, you can look at the numbers as I have written down here, but now you can try to verify for all other nodes and arcs that uh, these conditions are satisfied. Okay. So, um, so therefore, um, this is an exact and so now here um, we would want to um, convert the d i s into probabilities and so uh, what we would do is uh, so the probability of tra the probability of transverse transversing an edge i j is equally likely for all edges i k incident on i right and so now let me generalize this discussion and uh, we will say that uh, uh, so then i'll give you a process of uh, writing down the uh, corresponding state vector and how you define the uh, transition probabilities. So, take a uh, undirected graph now with n nodes. Okay. So, just take the general case and we will define the probability vector s by saying that the ith probability state uh, vector is uh, component is d i upon sigma d i. So, you take the degrees what we had defined here and now we are just normalizing. So, essentially uh, if you want to convert these to probabilities, you have to just define this by the total number of uh, edges, which will be summation d i. So, you are adding up the degrees of each node. So, which will actually become. So, that means, for example, um, uh, sigma i, if you do it here, uh, for this case, it will be the degrees are uh, 6, 7, 8 and 10. Right. So, summation d i is 10, right, which is twice the number of edges. Right. So, the, when you add up all the degrees, uh, they add up to uh, twice the number of edges in the graph. So, here we are normalizing. So, therefore, um, this is d i upon sigma d i. Then, s i's are probabilities, because when you add up sigma s i, sigma s i, this will be sigma d i divided by sigma d i, which is, which is sorry, <laughs> which is 1. Right. So, these are probability vectors. And, as we, they will satisfy this, because I am defining uh, this is uh, p i j as I am saying that uh, p i j is 1 upon d i at node i, uh, whatever the degree of the node, then I take the probability of traversing each of the edges, which are incident on i as equally likely. So, it will be 1 upon d i. So, whatever the degree of node i and then all edges, which are incident on uh, node i, I will take the probability as so i to j. So, this will be 1 upon d i and similarly, p j i will be 1 upon d j. Right. So, there uh, we are at node j, then whatever the number of uh, edges which are incident on j, then 1 upon d j and so p j i is 1 by d j. So, as we saw in this example and now you can easily verify that, <coughs> because you have simply divided each s i by uh, this thing. So, therefore, the, uh, the equations will remain the same and so these will be satisfied. So, these uh, this probability state vector and these transition probabilities define your uh, satisfy your time reversibility equations. And so, we will say that you know wandering around or this random walk on an undirected graph uh, can be looked upon as a time reversible Markov chain. Right. And you see here uh, one, one did not have to do any uh, hassle with solving a system of linear equations to compute your uh, state probabilities, stationary state probabilities. Uh, so, just uh, the simple formula gives you uh, the uh, way to compute them. Right? And uh, uh, this is what we really want to so show that, because of the property of time reversibility, things become so simple. Right? So, uh, so, this is finally, uh, our conclusion that uh, s i's and p i j's satisfy the reversibility equation. And so, s i's must be the stationary uh, probability vector. Okay. Now, you can generalize, you can talk of a generalized random walk. And here, suppose what we are saying is that you have uh, weights attached to the arcs. So, there is a weight w i j, which is non negative uh, for the arc i j. And if the arc i j is not there or the edge, I should say actually, uh, this should be called as edge, because in the directed case, it is the nomenclature is that you call them arcs when it is a when they have a direction. So, otherwise undirected uh, uh, can, uh, links are called edges. So, this is edge i j and so w i j s are non-negative and w i j is 0 if edge i j is not present. Right. So, we will discard that. Now, um, what we will say is 
that uh, again uh, we want to generalize this concept. So, what we will say is that probability of tra traversing an edge i j when at node i is proportional to w i j, let us say. So, I have shown you the weights here, right. For example, edge 1, 2 is 1, uh, 2, 2, 5 is 2 and so on. So, I have given you the weights w i j, right. And now, what we are saying is that the uh, probability of traversing the edge i j is proportional to w i j. So, uh, obviously, because these are numbers, integers, so they cannot be probability. So, I will have to normalize them. Now, uh, so I do this, I define uh, p i j as w i j upon, yeah, one more thing I should have uh, uh, spelled out here, that in this case, in the uh, uh, random walk case, uh, you see what is happening is that your probabilities, your s i s, the state probabilities are being defined by uh, this, right. So, d i upon sigma d i and that means that, uh, remember uh, state, uh, state probabilities, the stationary state probabilities also represented the fraction of time the system spent on uh, a particular state, right. So, here um, uh, since s i is d i upon sigma d i, you see the system will spend more time in state, in the state which has higher degree, right. So, the higher the d i, the more time, the higher the value of s i, because the normalizing factor is the same. So, therefore, the magnitude of s i gets determined by the magnitude of d i, and so um, uh, the system will spend more time uh, uh, in, a, in a state, uh, which has higher, which has more uh, edges incident on it. And of course, um, I should have spent little more time on the analogy. See, when we uh, said that uh, this is a Markov process, so here, um, essentially the nodes are the state of the system. We are saying that the, these are the states in which the system which, uh, will I mean, be occupied by the system and then the links are the uh, gives you the transition from that means, you can transition from 1 to 2 or you can transition from 1 to 3 and so on. So, the possible the possibilities of transitioning to different states. So, this is the analogy. So, now uh, let us talk about uh, generalized random walk and that is where we are saying that uh, we will have weights attached to the edges and the weights will be 0 whenever the edge is not present, right. And then we will define the probability of traversing an edge as w i j divided by the total weights of the edges, which are incident on that node, right. So, sigma w i k, sub, uh, submission with respect to k, okay. So, you add up all the weights. So, for example, uh, if you want to look at the probability uh, p 1 2, uh, p 1 2. So, the total weights here are 5. So, p 1 2 would be the weight of the edge 1 2, which is 1. So, 1 divided by 5. Similarly, uh, p 1 3 would be the weight is 2 here. So, 2 by 5, right. Then p 1 4 is 0, right. And uh, p 1 5, there is an edge. So, p 1 5 is 2 by 5, okay. And so, and the, now we have to define the uh, uh, state probabilities and to show you that again, you know, uh, generalized random walk. That means, now the probabilities of traversing an edge, when you are at particular node, will be given by this and therefore, uh, this will again be a, uh, uh, this is this is a random, uh, this is a Markov process, uh, where again the nodes represent the states and the uh, links, the edges give you the, uh, the uh, states to which you can transition. And um, now, when I define for you a state vector, uh, stationary probability vector, such that uh, the um, necessary conditions for reversibility are satisfied, then uh, this is also another example, a more general example of a um, uh, reversible Markov process. Yeah, so, uh, you see um, uh, with the weights attached to the edges, then we see that if I define my p i j as uh, w i j upon sigma k w i k. So, now here the notion of, you know, um, uh, of going to an edge <coughs> is equally likely uh, that has been replaced by. So, this is the weight of the edge i j and then divided by total uh, weights of the edges, which are incident on that node, right. So, then that is how we will define p i j and you can see that if all uh, w i j are the same, then this will be the exactly the same. That means, if you just take this as <coughs> I mean the number of edges which are incident, then this p i j will reduce to 1 by the number of uh, the degree of the node, right. So, uh, this is the general, uh, this is the generalization of the uh, random walk and so you will define p i j as w i j this. So, now uh, we will, uh, if you write this as this, then this will be sigma uh, w i k summation with respect to k p i j is w i j 
and of course, um, this condition uh, we are imposing that w i j is w j i. Right. So, then uh, in that case, uh, uh, and so again since I have been able to write this as this. So, w j i if you take the same equation w j i can be written as uh, p j i into you see the p i j replaced by p j i summation w j k summation over k. right? Because here it was w i k. So, here it will be the summation w j k k because you are at node j. So, from j you are transitioning to i. So, therefore, all weights of all the edges which are incident on node j which are of the kind j k. So, you add up all the weights of the uh, edges incident on node j and this now. So, now once you uh, get this then you see this is your reversibility equation because your p i j's are the transition probabilities and now I just have to uh, define my uh, corresponding uh, state probability uh, probabilities and then uh, you see uh, uh, this will give me a uh, reversible time reversible Markov process. This is the idea. So, as, I, as we said that your s i's we will uh, will be proportional to summation w i k over k and so we will normalize s i that is you let s i be <coughs> take the summation of all the weights and so sigma w i k with respect to summation with respect to k divided by summation with respect to i and k of w i k total weight. Right? And so therefore, by our result that we proved earlier s i's are the stationary, stationary probabilities. So, um, essentially uh, the same concept go through and uh, you can uh, now uh, uh, take a general case, you can assign any sets of weights to the edges and then you can define the corresponding transition probabilities and you will see that this will again be, this will be a generalized random walk. So, you can and you can very easily uh, see that it is uh, you know reversible in the sense that the process can go on and but if you start uh, going backwards then again it will be the same process that is repeated so exactly the same forward or backward doesn't make a difference okay so therefore um, uh, in other words uh, we can now get a feeling for the uh, time reversible uh, markov processes and the converse will also help you to fix ideas better now, what we are saying is that any reversible chain is of this form. So, given a reversible chain, we want to say that you will be able to associate a undirected graph and give weights to the edges such that you know and then you can define the corresponding prob transition probabilities and your state vector. Uh, this is uh, simple. So, therefore, now see that means if you are given a reversible chain, then this is the set of equations. So, that means there are some s i's and p i p i j's which satisfy uh, this necessary condition. So, this is given to you right that the uh, re time reversibility equations are satisfied by the uh, state vector uh, s and the transition probabilities p i j. So, some reversible chain is there. Now, we will start assigning we will say that we can draw a undirected graph and of course, the nodes will be the. Um, so, we can construct a graph with nodes as states and the edges i j for which p i j is positive. So, wherever uh, there is a positive p i j then the corresponding link will be there otherwise uh, it will not be there. Right? Now, let me define the weights on the edges. So, w i j I will simply define as s i p i j right? and this again by the definition because same s j p j i will be w j i. So, immediately you get that the weights are symmetric. So, w i j is w j i. So, by using this equation right. Now, uh, you want to compute the transition probabilities and which we will show can be done in terms of the w i j's. So, you want to compute uh, probability x n is i <coughs> given that x n minus 1 is j right. So, uh, this uh, because I am constructing uh, undirected graph and I am associating weights w i j. So, we remember with the with the from the generalized random walk uh, this transition probability we defined as w i j upon sigma k w i k exactly this here right. So, once uh, given a Markov process I am uh, uh, constructing a graph uh, undirected graph where the nodes are the uh, states and then now I have to um, and then the weights are well defined through this equation and w i j is w j i. So, once you have the weights then our process of you know generalizing a random walk gives us that the probability of transitioning from um, oh I am sorry this should have been so let me write this as uh, see it should have been I am writing w i j. So, this should be j and this should be 
i. So, so from i to j you are transitioning and so the probability would be w i j upon summation w i k summation with respect to k. Right? This is exactly what we had the way we had defined here. Okay. And uh, now, let us substitute for w i j from here, this is s i p i j and then summation if you sum up with respect to j or k, k it is a dummy variable does not matter. So, you are summing up this s i p i k with respect to k. Now, since um, i is independent of k, so s i comes out and sigma p i k with respect to k is equal to 1. This is 1, right. Remember transition matrix and uh, you are summing up the components of a row. So, therefore, this is equal to 1. So, then S i S i cancels and of course, as I had earlier said it and I will again repeat it that um, S i's are not 0, because if an S i is 0, then the probability of being in that state is 0 and so we can always reduce, we can remove that state from the process and come talk uh, and work with a reduced uh, process, right. So, therefore, uh, of course, uh, these are meaningful only when S i's are not 0. So, S i gets cancelled and you are left with P i j. So, that means, once um, uh, you given this, then I can assign the weights uh, by this equation and then once I have these weights, I can now define my transition probabilities in terms of these weights, right. W i j upon sigma w i k and uh, uh, once I have these transition probabilities, I can also define my S i's, they just reverting back to the process. So, here uh, S i's were this and so similarly, uh, we can say that uh, from here summation w i j is uh, summation j is equal to summation j S i p i j. So, this becomes this and therefore, this is S i. So, here your S i's are propor uh, proportional to uh, summation w i j, some, some with respect to j and um, uh, since S i's have to be probabilities, I can uh, normalize them. So, define by the total sum of weights and so this gives me uh, probabilities and uh, so my this thing is complete. That means, given any uh, Markov process which satisfies the time reversibility equations, I can assign a random walk with it and assign weights. Uh, I can define the weights, I can define the transition probabilities and the state probabilities. So, therefore, any uh, any time reversible Markov chain can be uh, modeled as a random walk and you can determine the uh, weights and the you can determine the transition probabilities and the state probabilities. Mm, and so, this is uh, a very simple in the sense that now uh, uh, you really do not to compute your this and this, uh, you uh, can do it with respect to uh, you know we do not have to solve system of linear equations and so this simplifies, but of course, uh, this is cl only a small class of uh, processes, Markov processes which would be, uh, which would satisfy the time reversibility condition, right. Okay, so, I think uh, this um, brings to an end. Of course, um, I should also just uh, mention that uh, the non-reversible Markov chains examples, um, one example and this is taken from Bernstein's um, lecture. Um, you know, at Harvard, he has uh, given lectures on Markov processes, Markov chains. So, he says that, uh, you know, world wide web. So, you can imagine, you know, each uh, web page as a, a state of the system, right. And so, web pages are states and edges, edges of, so again, you can picture this as a uh, graph, uh, but this will be a directed graph, right. So, for example, just take four web pages or maybe you can uh, take five web pages, does not matter. And then you see, it is like uh, if you are at page 1 here, then you can go from here to page 2 or you can go from here to page 3. So, these are the hyperlinks, right. You are looking for some, uh, searching for some word. Of, uh, remember, you get a page, uh, you open a page and then it links you to other pages. It shows the links, hyperlinks they are called to other. So, therefore, and this is a very small example, because uh, you know there are uh, millions and millions of uh, web pages and they will be connected and it is uh, every um, you know any time you open a page it will link you to uh, hundreds and thousands of pages and of course um, uh, there is a way of ranking and so on all that algorithm is there but in any case so the whole idea is that uh, uh, you can picture this as a directed graph so uh, each node will be a web page and the pages which are connected to a particular node will be directed by a link so for example from 1 you can go to 3 but you can't go from 3 to 1 
right. Similarly, you can go from 1 to 2, but you cannot go from 2 to 1 and so on. But at 4, you can go from 1 to 4, 4 to 1 and similarly from 4 to 2, but not 2 to 4. So, you can immediately see that uh, this will not be a, a time reversible uh, uh, process. Okay. Uh, uh, of course, there is algorithm to show you and then how do you compute the state probabilities and so on. But again, there is a whole algorithm interesting one, um, which gives you a method of uh, not actually having to solve system of equations again and you can compute the state probabilities and so on. But, um, and there is a way of computing the transition probabilities also. So, uh, example uh, web pages uh, worldwide, if you look at this, then uh, this will be and searching uh, on the web is not a, it will be a Markov process, because it will depend on see the prob, the, where you are just the probability of where you want to go will be, uh, this probability will not be dependent on how you reached one. So, it is easy to picture that uh, the search on the uh, web will be a Markov process, but it will certainly not be a, a, a reversible Markov chain. Okay. So, I think with this, I would like to end the uh, discussion or the this thing on uh, Markov processes. And now, we would like to talk about um, uh, continuous Markov processes and then go on to uh, specialized uh, uh, continuous Markov processes. See, after having looked at the discrete uh, Markov time process, Markovian uh, pro processes, stochastic processes, discrete uh, stochastic processes uh, with Markovian property. So, we have spent quite a few time, uh, quite a bit of time on looking at uh, the properties and uh, characteristics of such processes. I, we will now be looking at, because again uh, the continuous time processes are also very important and uh, especially the Markovian ones and I uh, would like to now through a series of lectures uh, show you the particular kinds of uh, Markovian uh, st uh, continuous time processes. Okay. So, um, and so want to show you the transition from uh, discrete uh, time processes to continuous time processes and uh, same and, and how the Markovian property also translates when you consider uh, time as varying continuously uh, instead of discrete time. Okay. So, <coughs> uh, we say that a continuous time process, we describe it with as x t, where x is the random variable. So, x t comma t greater than or equal to 0. So, this is uh, as t varies, you get different values. So, um, and since t is greater than or equal to 0. So, it is simply uh, varying continuously, the time is varying continuously. And uh, we say that if a continuous time stochastic process taking on values in the set of non negative integers. So, these values would be uh, positive integers, <coughs> non negative can be 0 also. And uh, the property uh, process is Markov process, if for all s and t uh, your uh, uh, and non negative integers i, j and x u where u is varying between 0 and s. So, these are all non negative integers. Probability that x t plus s is j given that x s is i. So, at time s the system is occupying state i let us say because these are the non negative integers. Now, so, we are the, uh, the non negative integers describe the state it is occupying. So, this tells you the state the value of x t will tell you the uh, state that the system is occupying at time t. So, here uh, probability x t plus s is j given that x s is i and that x u is small x u again these are positive values as u varies from 0 to s. So, given all the past history that means, the states which the system occupied from time 0 to s then at time s it is in i and now at time t plus s it is in j. So, this probability is equal to the probability that x t plus s is j given that x s is i. That means, this past history is redundant. You, uh, so, you do not want uh, uh, the, the probability, the, this probability will only depend on uh, this. That means, what is your present state and then uh, after time t, uh, it is occupying a state j. So, this probability is independent of how you reached uh, state i at time s. So, that means, whatever happened between 0 and s is not is immaterial. Okay. Now, um, which I am saying in words here, that is the conditional distribution of the future x t plus s given the present x s 
and the past depends only on the present and is independent of the past right and uh, this property and of course and if this proper probability is also independent of s that means it doesn't matter um, uh, what time and if you remember uh, the condition we were saying for stationarity uh, that uh, we were saying that probability in the discrete case we were saying that x n plus 1 is j given that x n is i is equal to probability x 1 is j given that x naught is i. So, the same property okay, that is, uh, so it does not matter when you are considering this conditional probability whether at time uh, 1 or at time n plus i, n plus 1 does not matter. Uh, so, then we said that uh, in this case these the system or the process is stationary because it is independent of the time. Right? So, same property is being carried over here. So, if this probability is independent of s. So, essentially uh, you are saying that um, uh, no matter s is 10th uh, day or 15th day or the 0, 0th day does not matter. If in the 0th day the system is occupying state i, then at x t plus at x t it will be j and this will be the same no matter what time you s takes. right? So, if this probability is independent of s, then we say that the uh, continuous Markov process is stationary. Okay. And now, um, just let us consider the finite case. That means, the system can it is a continuous process, but it can occupy sta finite states uh, i varying from 0 for 1 to m. Right? And now, we associate a random variable t i which is the amount of time the process spends in state i. Okay. So, it continues to be in state i and how do you, uh, uh, how do you uh, sort of uh, express this uh, property or how do you describe this t i. So, we say that suppose the system enters state i at time t prime equal to s. Okay. Then for any fixed amount of time t greater than 0, this greater than t will be possible if it has been continuously that means if x t prime is i for all t prime in the interval s 2 t plus s. So, at time s it started it entered the state i and now you want to know for how long it will continue in that state that means for all values of uh, t uh, of t prime between s and t plus s uh, this value should continue to be i. right? So, this is the kind of random variable we want to. So, the amount of time the process spends in state i. So, these are the important uh, thing and we have just now said that um, uh, and, and we say that this is a Markovian property with stationary probabilities implies that uh, probability t i greater than t plus s given t i is greater than s is the same as probability t i greater than t right? because I can take s to be 0 and then this will simply be that. Uh, uh, initially it is state 0 and then now it is in continues to be state uh, 0. So, the probability oh okay, in that case uh, yeah uh, amount of time the process spends in state i. Okay. So, I will take the time s to be 0 sorry that is not the state. So, s is 0 then uh, simply uh, you started in state i and so it will in be independent of when you are considering this possible probability. Uh, so, uh, as long as so that means only the duration of uh, occupying the state i that is in, important. It doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter at what point of time you are considering this. So essentially, this just means that the process has been in time in state i for time t. So therefore, this is uh, now uh, this is the that means t i is memoryless. So the kind of uh, continuous that means when you take the continuous process and you uh, impose the Markovian property, then it actually translates to saying that this random variable t i is memoryless. Okay. And um, if now you remember, uh, of course, we did not prove this part when uh, we talked of exponential distribution, negative exponential distribution. We said that um, uh, exponential any random variable which has a negative exponential distribution is memoryless and exactly this property that means t i would be and if, because the course uh, level was such that I could not prove the uh, reverse thing that any distribution having a, a memoryless property has to be negative exponential. I did not prove that part, but maybe later on sometime when you do an advanced course you can uh, see how that uh, property is proved. So, in any case, 
and uh, since uh, this is a Markovian process with uh, memory less. So, therefore, T i will have a negative exponential distribution. So, now um, I will be uh, describing to you talking about uh, Poisson processes and then birth and death processes very interesting and they also uh, you know model a uh, lot of situations in, uh, in uh, practical life and um, you know lot of processes you can show uh, have this property uh, approximately of course, you cannot say that you can always model the real situation uh, very accurately. So, um, we will be talking about and so then uh, see I will be referring to birth and death processes as M M 1. So, it will be that you know the um, arrival process is Markovian and the um, uh, uh, departure process. So, you, you, you suppose you are in a situation, uh, suppose you are at a counter, at a bank counter or at a post office counter and you want to uh, people are coming in and then they get serviced and then they leave the system. So, you want to model that situation. So, here uh, you describe such uh, such processes by M M 1 property, which means that you know the arrival process. So, you can actually show that if the arrival pattern is Poisson, then the inter arrival times will be uh, exponential. And so, the, the inter arrival times have a Markovian property. Then the service times will also be shown to be under the conditions. Of course, uh, the conditions that we will impose will be uh, this thing. So, they were under uh, the service times will also follow an exponential uh, distribution. So, we will call it M M and then one server. So, this is the connection and therefore, uh, you see uh, that why that why it was very important that I talk about uh, discrete Markov processes and then continuous Markov processes, which uh, again have the same pro which the property Markovian property in this case can again be written down as this and this will be uh, the memoryless property, which implies that the uh, T i has a uh, negative exponential distribution. So, the birth and death processes that we will consider uh, will have the same prop uh, under this uh, we will consider the birth and death processes where the arrival inter arrival times uh, follow uh, have a Markov have a negative exponential distribution and the service times also have a negative exponential distribution. So, then we can very easily describe the uh, system to be M M 1 where with one server and of course, you can also consider more than one server and we will uh, derive lot of interesting results for uh, the uh, parameters related with such distributions.